Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James Julia Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their upcoming October of 2016 firearms auction. And the one we're taking a look at today probably looks like a 1911 with no finish, which it is. Now what's very interesting is this is a Pusan Ironworks 1911 with no finish. Uh, these are, there's a very small number, probably, well, no more than a couple hundred, uh, 1911s manufactured in Korea in the early 1950s, during the Korean War. And this is one of them. It's actually really interesting to take a look at. Now, a lot of, there are a number of these that have shown up, and it's not uncommon. In fact, almost all of them that I've seen have had at least one American part in them. And most commonly, it's actually the barrel. Um, in fact, if you only look at a small subset, it's easy to make the assumption that uh, the, the Pusan factory got their hands on a pile of 1911 barrels and built pistols around them. However, this one, for example, has a Korean-made barrel in it, but it's got a couple other American parts. So it appears that whenever they had available parts, they'd use them, and when they didn't, they'd manufacture parts. I've also seen a gun uh, which was, a, it was actually an American a Remington, a Remington Rand 1911 frame, that had a Korean made of a Pusan Ironworks slide on it. They'd field refurbished this captured, damaged gun. So th this was an interesting little sort of small scale indigenous effort in Korea to manufacture small arms. Uh, why don't we go ahead and take a closer look at this so you can really see the detail of what this thing is. So this really is mechanically exactly the same as the 1911. The only differences are mechanical fit and finish. Um, and you'll see that as we start to take it apart. The only markings on the gun are right here on the side. Now these are Korean characters on the slide and it's actually the same word up here on the slide as on the frame. Um, I had some folks who uh, attempted to assist me on translating that and nobody can really figure out, they figured out what it spells but not what it actually means. Now this, it's, it's easier to read it down here. This word does show up on all the other examples of uh, Pusan Ironworks 1911s that I've been able to find reference to. So it's not gibberish and it's not um, random. It means something, I just don't know exactly what. Now this is serial number 247. That's marked both on the slide and the frame, although the numbers are a little skewed up there. But uh, I've seen serial numbers up into the 300s and down into the, the double digit range. So maybe 500 of them made in total. Uh, hard to say, we don't have a whole lot of evidence to go on. Now, disassembly is going to be just like a standard 1911. So I'm going to start with the plunger up here and pull out the mainspring. There's that. And then we're going to cock the hammer. We'll pull the slide back to the disassembly notch right there. Pop that. Oh, I will pull the magazine out. Bring this back to the disassembly notch pull the slide stop pin out. There's the frame, plunger, barrel bushing, barrel, and slide. Now this magazine is an American made magazine. It's got a little bit of a uh, C-R stamp on the floor plate. I have no idea if this is the magazine that was originally used in the gun or if it's something that someone added after the fact. In fact, that's kind of one of the problems with these pistols in general is if you find them with an American made part, for example, the recoil spring guide rod here is an American made one. Uh, we can tell that by the fact that it's got a lot of remnants of a, a nice blued finish where the rest of the gun has none. Um, we can also tell just by looking at the machining, uh, it's obviously factory made and it doesn't match the sort of contours that we find on some of these, uh, the, the Korean parts. Uh, the firing pin is also an American made one in this gun. And here's the problem, how can you prove that, that the ironworks in Korea was using American made parts as opposed to the gun was missing some bits and, or broke some bits and so later owners replaced them with American parts. Well, short of first-hand knowledge uh, from whoever brought one of these guns back, that, that they never changed that and that's how the gun was originally made, there's really no way to objectively prove uh, that this was being done. Obviously, I don't have any documentation or paperwork from the original factory. However, 
the fact that uh, so many of these guns all exhibit the same sort of uh, American-made part usage, uh, where it's just a couple of parts in an overall gun, seems to me to pretty much seal the deal that, yeah, these guys were using American parts when they could get their hands on them. So if we take a close look at some of these, let's see if I can get the camera to focus well. If you take a close look at some of these, you can see that that part is really well made. It's got some scratches on it, but all the contours are nice and parallel. The curves are smooth and uniform. That's an American factory made part. As opposed to something like this, where you can see that's not really the case. And if you look, you can see that the surface of the metal is rather different. Some of the, like the curves on the top and bottom of this lug aren't uh, symmetrical. If we look at the, the slide stop here, just the, the machining cuts on these complex areas, that is not a fa an American factory made part. That's definitely a, uh, a Korean made uh, from this particular uh, pseudo factory. The frame exhibits the same sort of, of things. For example, you can see the recoil, s the, the plunger here on the slide stop is not, not quite the same as you'd have on an American one. Um, if we look at some of the cuts inside here, it's just everything's a bit rougher. You can see the kind of the mottled color of the metal finish, uh, like it was maybe a little bit porous. And then we have a few clearly non-standard designs, like the shape of the hammer spur, the shape of the safety catch. These are all functionally identical, but um, anyone who's really familiar with a 1911 is not going to mistake those for 1911 parts. Um, I would expect, within some tolerancing issues, uh, pretty much all standard American factory parts would interchange and drop in on these guns. So here on the slide, these cuts are a good example of the difference in quality between the factory and these Poussin Ironworks guns. You can see that's clearly not jig and properly uh, cut. So would I shoot this? No, I probably wouldn't. I think this is probably a safe gun to shoot, unlike some um, war production copies, uh, workshop copies like this. I think this one's probably safe to shoot, but I wouldn't shoot it. I think it probably has a reasonably short uh, service life. Uh, the parts probably aren't made of really good steel. You'll probably get deformation over not too much time, but I don't think it would explode. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Really cool to take a look at a gun like this. It really is kind of in that gray zone where it's not something handmade with files, but it's not really the product of a full-fledged factory either. It's in this middle ground of, you know, we're in a war and we really need guns and we've got some tools and some skilled workers and let's see what the best is that we can put together. So a really cool addition, I would think, to a 1911 collection or a Korean War firearms collection. And if you'd like to have it yourself and add it to either one of those, well, check out the description text below. You'll find a link there to Julia's catalog page on this piece. Read their description and see their pictures and uh, come up here to the auction or place a bid via the telephone. Thanks for watching.